أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسولنا محمد الأمين الحمد لله على نعمة الإسلام الحمد لله على نعمة الإيمان الحمد لله على نعمة القرآن الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله لقد جاءت رسل ربنا بالحق صلوا على رسولنا محمد صلوا على قرة أعيننا محمد اللهم صل على رسولنا محمد وعلى آل رسولنا ونبينا محمد بعدد كل داء ودواء وبارك وسلم عليه وعليهم كثيرا اللهم صل على رسولنا محمد وعلى آل رسولنا ونبينا محمد كلما اختلف الملوان وتعاقب العصران وكرر الجديدان واستقبل الفرقدان وبلغ روحه وأرواح أهل بيته منا التحية والسلام أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي وفوض أمري إلى الله إن الله بصير بالعباد وما توفيقي ولا اعتصامي إلا بالله عليه توكلت وعليه فليتوكل المتوكلون ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم اللهم صل على رسولنا محمد حتى لا تبقى صلاة اللهم بارك على رسولنا محمد حتى لا تبقى بركة اللهم ارحم رسولنا محمدا حتى لا تبقى رحمة اللهم سلم على رسولنا محمد حتى لا يبقى سلام اللهم صل على رسولنا محمد وعلى آل رسولنا ونبينا محمد كلما ذكره الذاكرون وكلما سهى عنه الغافلون اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن سهلا إذا شئت اللهم عملنا بما أنت أهله ولا تعاملنا بما نحن أهله اللهم اجعل هذا العمل خالصا لوجهك الكريم اللهم انصر من نصر الدين واخذل من خذل المسلمين اللهم انصر جيوش المسلمين وعساكر الموحدين واكتب الصحة والسلامة والعفو والعافية علينا وعلى الحجاج والغزاة والمسافرين في برك وبحرك من أمة محمد أجمعين اللهم أخلصنا بخالصة ذكر الدار وجعلنا عندك لمن المصطفين الأخيار اللهم أخلصني بخالصة ذكر الدار وجعلني عندك لمن المصطفين الأخيار رب زدني علما وألحقني بالصالحين رب زدنا علما وألحقنا بالصالحين ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا اللهم ربي إني لا أحصي ثناء عليك فأنت كما أثنيت على نفسك ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بك يا رب العالمين وذكر فإن الذكرى تنفع المؤمنين وذكر بالقرآن من يخاف وعيد وأما بنعمة ربك فحدث أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم
أم تقولون إن إبراهيم وإسماعيل وإسحاق ويعقوب والأسباط والأسباط كانوا هودا أو نصارا <تصفيق> قل أأنتم أعلم أم الله ومن أظلم ممن كتم شهادة عنده من الله وما الله بغافل عما تعملون تلك أمة قد خلت لها ما كسبت ولكم ما كسبتم ولا تسألون عما كانوا يعملون <تصفيق> سيقول السفهاء من الناس ما ولاهم ما ولاهم عن قبلتهم التي كانوا عليها قل لله المشرق والمغرب يهدي من يشاء إلى صراط مستقيم وكذلك جعلناكم أمة وسطا لتكونوا شهداء على الناس ويكون الرسول عليكم شهيدا وما جعلنا القبلة التي كنت عليها إلا لنعلم من يتبع الرسول من يتبع الرسول ممن ينقلب على عقبيه وإن كانت لكبيرة إلا على الذين هدى الله وما كان الله ليضيع إيمانكم إن الله بالناس لرؤوف رحيم صدق الله العظيم These ayat from Surah Al-Baqarah <coughs> We started with the ayah number 140 Allah the Almighty says in this ayah أم تقولون or say you that in Ibrahim wa Ismail wa Ishaq wa Yaqub wa Al-Asbaq that Ibrahim Abraham wa Ismail and Ishmael wa Ishaq and Isaac wa Yaqub and Jacob wal Asbaq and 12 the 12 sons of Israel Yaqub alayhi salam kanu hudan aw nasara that they were Jews or Christians or do you say this the ayah asking them asking the Christians and the Jews that are they think that Ibrahim was a Jew or was a Christian do they think that Ishmael was a Jew or a Christian and Ishaq and Yaqub were they Jews or Christians look at yourself look at your belief and look at their belief is it the same where they believe like you especially the Christians they believe in some things which even they could not know about that there is a son for God and that there is Trinity to worship Allah with besides two they all were fully unaware about that falsehood and they were believed that Allah is the only one the creator and all the humanity are his creatures and we are equal before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not like the Jews who believe that they are special in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that the fire would not touch them except a few days and some wishful thinkings that they have which even Ibrahim السلام, and Ismail and Isaac and Jacob even they could not know at this point Allah asks them قُلْ أَأَنْتُمْ أَعْلَمُ أَمِ if they claim that they were Christians or Jews then Allah say to them do you believe do you know more accurate or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who knows the reality whose knowledge is better than 
the other. قُلْ أَأَنْتُمْ أَعْلَمْ أَمِ اللَّهِ Surely Allah knows the best. And he says that they were all believing in Allah alone, the only one God, and they didn't associate anyone or anything besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in worshipping him. Then Allah threatens them, saying, وَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنْ كَتَمَ شَهَادَةً عِنْدَهُ مِنَ اللَّهِ Who is more unjust? وَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنْ كَتَمَ شَهَادَةً Than that person who conceals a testimony. He has عِنْدَهُ مِنَ اللَّهِ From Allah. This ayah gives us the clue that they have that testimony that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send a messenger a last messenger with the same message of Allah whom he had sent before to the prophets and that was La ilaha illallah there is no God who deserves to be worshipped except the only one God alone and that they have the testimony about Ibrahim Abraham and Ishmael and Isaac and Jacob that they know that they were not <coughs> Christians like them and they were not Jews like them they were all Muslims who submitted themselves to Allah the only one God alone so they conceal the reality in order to continue their corrupted religion Christians and Jews and they conceal the testimony <coughs> about the reality and they had from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and here Allah threatens them woman of them who is more than just and we take the lesson of the ayah learning that no one can be more than just from that person who conceals the reality because all the realities depends to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the one who teaches the people. He is the one who teaches the humanity. And whatever knowledge we have is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if someone have a knowledge from Allah Azza and conceals it from the people, then he is a wrongdoer and that Allah will punish him for that concealing especially when this knowledge is about religion is about religion of the, is about the knowledge of the truth the reality of the human being and the purpose and the meaning of this life whom Allah has sent through the messengers and revealed to them so no one has the right to conceal what they have from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here the Christians and the Jews. Allah threatens them, not directly, but says to them, وَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ Who is more unjust than the one who conceals a testimony which he has from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And at the end of the ayah, like the same threat, Allah says, وَمَا اللَّهُ And Allah is not بِغَافِلٍ Is not unaware. Allah is not unaware عَمَّا تَعْمَلُونَ Of what you do. So Allah is fully aware about your actions, about your intentions, about what you conceal in your hearts, in your chests or in your books so <coughs> you will not be free from Allah at the end eventually we all shall return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will inform us of what we used to do we learn from the ayah that it's hard to solve all the problems here some problems or mainly the big problems will remain till 
the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that day يَوْمَ تُبْلَ السَّرَائِرِ where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will expose all the secrets which the people concealed in their chests so here in this life may the people lie against themselves and against the reality throughout their life they may conceal the reality within themselves without confessing it without acknowledging it so there is no way to enter their chest and to bring out what they really think about the matter what is their real thought about the matter so we come at a point and stop there saying we shall wait and you shall wait until we see before, before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the liar <coughs> because we are sure that the truth is one it cannot be two or three or four if we are speaking about the reality of God that he is our creator and he has every right over us and we have to worship him that is the message of Islam and the others say some different things many religions in service of this planet and they all claim some different and uh, things which contradict the pure monotheistic belief of Islam which Ibrahim السلام, was upon it with which Adam السلام, was believing in it which Jacob and Dawood and Suleiman all messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came with the same message but the others which say some different things like the Christians and the Jews and the others they all claim that the truth what they believe so the reality will be exposed the reality will be clear in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore let everyone look at himself every individual let him look at himself what he thinks about <coughs> the reality about the belief about his belief uh, whether he criticize it reason and reflect upon it and think about the belief of Islam and others Allah will guide him to the truth if he is sincerely looking for the truth then Allah shall guide him we hope that Allah will guide everyone but lest the people should be ready for that guidance but Allah informs us that most of the people do not want the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they deliberately refuse refuse to learn the reality they follow the steps of the shayateen satans in order to entertain themselves in this life without learning the truth about the purpose of the life <coughs> So we can fool ourselves and maybe we can fool the others but we cannot fool Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so eventually when we return to him Allah will make our hands to speak make our brain and heart to speak Allah will cause them a will give them that ability to speak and will make it clear what we are thinking within our chests so at that day everything will be made clear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so here every individual is responsible about himself about his sincerity sincerance and about his reality which he is fully aware about it within himself in his innermost thinking let's move on, let's move on to the ayah to the next ayah which is 141 Allah says about Ibrahim, Ismail, Ishaq and Yaqub and 
twelve sons, the offspring of Jacob. Tilka, dressing them. Tilka, they are. Tilka, ummatun, they were a nation. But they passed away. Now you are here in the life. Laha ma kasabat. They, they had whatever they worked or their deeds or they are responsible for their deeds they had their actions they consumed their chance and did whatever they did so their actions their deeds is for them means that the, you are not responsible for their actions their actions is for them and your actions is for you, are for you, you are you will be responsible for your actions. Let everyone look at himself. You shall not be asked about what they used to do. You can take your lesson, you can draw the lesson from their life, listen to their story, try to understand their test and how did they respond to the Creator of Allah, Creator Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala? <coughs> but you shall not be responsible for their actions. So we can speak about them, but we should not hope that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will forgive us because of them, or we cannot think that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will blame us or will punish us because of them. We are different people at different time and every individual is responsible for his very actions as Allah said وَلَا تَزِرُوا زِرَةٌ وِزْرَ أُخْرَى no one will be responsible for the wrong of the others he will be responsible for himself <coughs> let's move on to the area number 100 and 42 Allah says in this ayah سيقول السفهاء من الناس some of the people the pagans the fools السفهاء the fools of the people will say ما ولاهم عن قبلتهم what turned them what made them to turn from their prayer direction, from their Qibla? What was the reason for them so they turned for another direction? Beforehand, Prophet Muhammad in Mecca, he was turning his, he was facing Baytul Maqdis in his prayer then he migrated to Medina and after a while about 16 or 17 months Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him to turn in his prayer to Kaaba as a new prayer direction so this is the second Qibla and the first Qibla surely was by the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but that command we cannot find it in Quran so we understood that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him through a revelation which is not Quran <coughs> ما ولاهم عن قبلتهم what made them to turn away from their direction from their prayer direction التي كان وعليها which they were upon it قل say as an answer to them قل لله المشرق والمغرب to Allah belongs the east and the west so as a direction all the directions is Allah's all directions created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so if some direction if Allah commands us to 
pray in a certain direction that is what make uh, what makes uh, it important for us but if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends another commandment in order to turn to another side then we turn to that side we give the importance to the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to the direction itself so there is no direction which is uh, special or important or divine because of itself no, all directions, the east and the west, all created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, give the importance, the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Beforehand, Allah commanded us to face Jerusalem in prayer. So, the Prophet Muhammad and his companions faced that direction in their prayer. In Mecca, the Prophet Muhammad was putting Kaaba between himself and Jerusalem when he was worshipping, when he was performing Salah. But in prayer, in, after he migrated to Medina, it was impossible to, to do so. So he was praying towards Jerusalem while remaining Kaaba beside himself. So it was more difficult for the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to do so. Then he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to change his prayer direction to Kaaba. And we will read, we will read the ayat about this matter. ما ولاهم عن قبلتهم التي كانوا عليها What made them to turn to another direction? from the direction which they used to pray on المغرب, say to Allah is the east and the west يهدي من يشاء, he guides whom he wills إلى صراط مستقيم to a straight way this answer is very clear and is very conceivable and teach us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I think turning the direction of the Kaaba also teaches us the same message, gives us the same message that there is no place which is divine or there is no direction which is holy if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command you to pray in some place that is you play there because of the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you give that importance for example we make pilgrimage Hajj uh, al in Kaaba and at that place surrounding the Kaaba the monastic of the rituals of the pilgrimage it's not permissible to do the same actions, the same rituals in some place else and hoping that this is Hajj hoping that Allah will accept it as a pilgrimage so when we do so we are not doing it because of that place that it is holy itself but we do that worship I mean the pilgrimage there because of the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the same thing is with the Kaaba, the Qibla beforehand Kaaba was not a prayer direction for the people and for the messenger as I said Prophet Muhammad himself was remaining the Kaaba beside, uh, was remaining the Kaaba uh, Uh, was not taking the Kaaba before him when he was facing Jerusalem and when he were in Medina 
So it was very difficult for him, but he was fully aware that this is the commandment of Allah And if Allah would not change direction, we would all do the same. We will not would take the Kaaba as a direction in the prayers. So the commandment of Allah is important. If he would change the, uh, the prayer direction to some place else other than Jerusalem or Kaaba, would all follow that direction, would all face that direction in our prayers because no direction is divine by itself we are here in order to submit to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so here Allah says Yahdi man yasha. Allah is the one who gives the commandment Allah is the one who has that right who says take that direction or do that or abstain from doing that this is the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he guides whom he wills to a straight path we also learn from the ayah that the new direction meaning Kaaba the new Qibla is the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah azawajal will command his prophet to face Kaaba in his prayers قولوا قولي هذا واستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم ولسائر المؤمنين ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا وأخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إصرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته